One of the greatest examples of human ingenuity is the Voyager 2 spacecraft, which, for more than decades after launch, is still operating even in the most extreme conditions of deep space. Despite being billions of miles away, the tenacious spacecraft is still sending back amazing and occasionally terrifying discoveries to the mission controllers on Earth. One of these discoveries was a massive wall of fire when Voyager 2 crossed the boundary of our solar system. What transpires at this boundary, and how are we affected on Earth? Let's find out. Welcome to our channel, guys. In today's video, we'll discuss how Voyager has sent back terrifying new data to Earth. Before that, do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We have discovered many new things and learned a lot about the outer limits of the solar system as a result of Voyager 2's journey into interstellar space. The event has also called into question some preconceived notions we had about the boundary, but understanding how the Sun operates will help you understand the significance of Voyager 2's most recent discoveries. Contrary to popular belief, the Sun isn't a peacefully burning ball that illuminates the universe. Rather, it's a raging nuclear furnace speeding through the galaxy at about 450,000 miles per hour as it orbits the galactic center. Of course, you won't feel the high speed because of the mass. Since its launch about 50 years ago, NASA's most traveled spacecraft, Voyager 1, is still making its way into unexplored parts of the cosmos. However, there appears to be a problem with this venerable space probe device, leading it to send back confusing data to Earth and perplexing experts. Scientists have been interested in learning more about the universe beyond since the Great Bang, and this is what led to the launch of the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 space probes, among others. According to the official fact sheet, the Voyager 2 spacecraft launched on August 20, 1977, from the NASA Kennedy Space Center. On September 5th of that year, two weeks later, Voyager 1 was launched. Nonetheless, how did they switch places? The weight of each spacecraft, which is comparable to that of a small vehicle at 720 kilos, is essentially the same. They were both launched during a period of time when the outer planets were in a unique alignment that caused a slingshot effect that propelled the spaceship from one planet to the next. But because they had to move at various speeds and over distinct paths, the Voyager 1 was able to pass its twin ship on December 15, 1977. Since then, it has been our go-to resource for learning about various facts and space-related riddles. The first spacecraft to do so was this one. When it began its 1978 Jovian imaging mission, it was around 265 million kilometers from Earth. It sent a massive amount of photographs back to the planet. A time-lapse movie showcasing Jupiter's 10 spins was made from 3,750 images taken by the Voyager 1 during an outstanding 100-hour period starting in January 1979. It had passed through the Jovian moon system in February 1979, and a month later, it had found a tiny ring around Jupiter. Another first-of-its-kind occurrence was when Voyager 1 found two new moons, Phoebe and Metis. There would then be two course corrections to get this spacecraft ready for its flyby of Saturn and to prevent a potential collision with one of Saturn's moons, Titan. Voyager 1 also found four other moons during its mission around Saturn, including Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dione, and Rhea. Scientists chose to terminate the Voyager planetary mission when the Saturn mission was complete and sent Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 outside of the solar system at a speed of 325 million miles per year. In January 1990, the brand new Voyager Interstellar Expedition got underway. At a distance of 6 billion kilometers from the Sun, on February 14, 1990, Voyager 1 captured some of history's most famous images, which include the Sun and the majority of the planets. These probes wouldn't exist without the power supply and would have long since stopped returning signals. They use radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGS, for their energy instead of solar panels because they are too far from the sun for solar energy to be useful. Each of the Voyager probes has three RTGs, and they use plutonium-238 as their fuel source. When the Voyagers first launched, they were generating 470 watts at 30 volts DC, but they were only able to sustain that amount of power for a short period. The spacecraft has a second source of power on board that is also essential to its operation. 
the spacecraft has small thrusters that enable them to be reoriented to face the Earth for communication when necessary. These thrusters have a tank of hydrazine fuel that they draw from, even though they only work in bursts. The Voyagers were generating just under 270 watts each at the beginning of the mission, or about 76% of the power. One fascinating feature of the thrusters is that they have a backup after 37 years, although they will ultimately run out. The primary thrusters weren't operating effectively anymore. NASA then switched to the backup engines, which hadn't worked in nearly 40 years, and they performed flawlessly in the depths of space, where even sunlight can't penetrate. A significant advancement in space exploration has been made with Voyager 2. It has succeeded in becoming only the second spacecraft to do so. 119 astronomical units from the Sun this took place. The distance between the Sun and the Earth which is 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers, is one astronomical unit. Trader 1 had completed. This was a few years earlier, and the reason for that was that Voyager 2 had fewer detours. The former made flybys of Neptune and Uranus while en route. But luckily for us, Voyager has been sending us some fascinating information. There were 60 photos in total, bringing the total number of photos taken by Voyager 1 to 67,000. In order to conserve power and memory space before the spacecraft's interstellar trip, the cameras on board were eventually shut off. In addition to the interstellar probes Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, NASA also has the Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, and New Horizons. Until Voyager 1 passed it on February 17, 1998, Pioneer 10 was the furthest spaceship. Voyager 1 traveled for another 14 years before it finally arrived at the interstellar environment on August 25, 2012, with no other space probe in sight to catch up with it. However, NASA didn't publicly announce the accomplishment until 2013. As of November 2018, both space probes have officially left our solar system after Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause and entered the interstellar realm. Voyager 1 is now thought to be 14.5 billion miles or 155 astronomical units from the planet. It has continued to provide us with important information that no other space probe mission has been able to divulge since it entered the undiscovered zone beyond our solar system. Despite the fact that the spacecraft has spent the majority of its 45-year trip in space in good condition, experts have just begun to observe some odd discrepancies in its operation. Recently, Voyager 1 has started to send enigmatic signals back to Earth suggesting that it may be unsure of its location's coordinates. Normally, scientists have pre-programmed the Voyager to either go into safe mode or sound an alarm in the event that it is lost in space. But so far, it hasn't done either. What exactly is happening on board then? Every interstellar spacecraft, including Voyager 1 and 2, is equipped with a special 12-inch gold-plated disc that stores audio and video communications in case extraterrestrial life finds the spacecraft. 35 Earth noises, 115 life photos, 90 minutes of Western music, and greetings from former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and former U.N. Secretary General Kurt Waldheim are just a few of the items on the disk. Consequently, if aliens took control of it, they would likely be attempting to understand the communications. Scientists have, however, been quick to dispel concerns that the spacecraft is currently under the direction of extraterrestrial life. The proper operation of Voyager depends on the AACS. For starters, it always maintains its antenna pointing at Earth, so that scientists may quickly receive data. Additionally, it controls how the spaceship is oriented. Engineers keeping an eye on the situation currently feel that the AACS is functioning as it should, which only adds to the enigma we already face. Additionally, none of the safety mechanisms designed to defend the spacecraft from dangers have been activated. Given the distance between us and the space probe, launching a rescue effort is essentially impossible. It is so far away, those communications traveling at the speed of light from Earth take almost 21 hours to get there, i.e. it takes an average of two days for two-way communication between Earth and the spacecraft. Do you think we will be able to retrieve more information from the Voyager missions? Let us know in the comments, and do not forget to give us a like, share, and do subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching.